Last time I mentioned the mindfulness of breathing exercise. It's often described as the Buddhist meditation, although it was around long before the Buddha. It's actually a concentration or focusing exercise. You focus on the breath. You spend quite a lot of time doing this, just focusing on the breath. There are lots of parts of the breath that you can focus on, but you might just focus on the point at which it enters and leaves the nostrils. And you usually do this with your eyes closed or half closed. And as you do this, a peculiar thing happens. You start to wonder, if you're wondering at all, whether what you're focusing on is real or imaginary. Are you actually focusing on the breath or are you focusing on an idea of the breath? Or are you even caught up just in the idea of focusing? It becomes quite intangible. This very fundamental mechanism, the mechanism of the breath, of breathing, its reality comes into question. Perhaps this is similar to what happens when you concentrate on a word. If you repeat a word, you just keep repeating the word. You might have done this as a child. But the word somehow, eventually, after a certain number of repetitions, becomes strange and meaningless. That's something worth doing. Here's another exercise. Perhaps you could close your eyes right now and take your attention to the palm of your hand. Now I'm asking you to focus on the actual palm of your hand, not on what it might be touching. So you can take your attention to the palm of your hand and don't do anything. I could say, move it once you've done that. Move your palm. You can do that. In fact, in order to move your hand, you need to take your attention to it first of all, don't you? But let's not bother about moving it. Let's just take our attention to it. Again, not to what it might be in contact with, but just to the palm of your hand. And be aware of any sensations you might have. Now, what's actually going on here? There are two things I want to mention. First of all, if you do this exercise and you focus carefully on the, just the palm of your hand, you might be aware of some tingling sensations, some warmth. Eckhart Tolle gives this exercise in The Power of Now, and he describes this as getting in touch with your inner body. It's an energy body. And Robert Bruce in Astral Dynamics gives lots of similar exercises as well. And in this way you can build up a sense of an inner body, or an energy body, or a subtle body. It's quite a, a nice thing to do. But if you're of a hard-headed scientific disposition, you might think, well, that's just imagination, isn't it? It's a little bit of suggestion. What's the reality of that energy, of that sensation? Are you really feeling it? Are you really feeling that energy, that warmth? Or maybe I just put the suggestion there. Well, let's take the attention to the palm once again, without moving it. What are you actually doing? When I say take your attention to the palm, most people will just do it. They won't question it, they won't think there's anything strange about that. Because this is what you do before you move it, isn't it? But what is actually happening? 
what is actually happening when you put your attention to the palm of your hand. Is anything happening? Is it real? If I then say, move your hand, you say, well, that's real. Of course, that's real. We can, we can all see this is movement. But if I say to you, my attention is in my right toe, which it is, you wouldn't know because you don't see any difference. If I say my attention is in my hand now, which it is, there's no difference for you whether my attention is in the right hand or in my right big toe. Now it's back in my hand. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. The attention is in the hand. The attention has to be in the hand before I can move it. So, is the attention in the hand something real? If it's not real, how can I do this? So is something unreal making something real happen? It doesn't really make sense to say that, does it? But then again, ideas can make things happen, can't they? A song can make you cry or make you happy. A song can have a very physical effect. So this boundary between what is real and what is not, between what is imaginary and what is physical, is perhaps a little artificial. Either it's all real or it's all unreal. How can something unreal affect what is real? For many people, what is real is what is material, matter real. They're materialists. They believe that reality is made of matter. Well, what are the material components of an idea? What's the difference between the material components which constitute my attention in my palm and the material components which constitute my attention in my right big toe? I don't know about you, but it strikes me as rather absurd to talk about the material components of the attention. You might as well talk about the material components of the idea of communism or the material components of a song. What are the material components of a song? Is a song it's recording? If that was so, then there wouldn't be any songs before the age of recording. We do not live in a material world. We do not live in a physical world. Explore it. Find out for yourself. Be bold in acknowledging what is the actuality and not simply what you want to believe.